Hello and welcome to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You are watching episode 4, Cocktail Sort. In the previous episode of Sorting Algorithms Redux, we took a look at Bubble Sort. One particular characteristic that we actually recognize in Bubble Sort is the fact that the larger numbers move rapidly to the right of the list, kind of like a bubble rising in a fluid. Now, there is another related phenomena that we want to take a look at. Let us now take a look at a full run of bubble sort, but instead of paying attention to the big guys, let us take a look at the smallest numbers. Notice that with each pass, the small numbers don't move a lot. In fact, they move really slowly, taking small steps to the left. This is what leads to the term rabbits and turtles. You see, larger numbers in the list are considered rabbits. The reason why we call them that is because they move really quickly to the right of the list. Small numbers are called turtles because they barely move at all. Their movement is extremely slow and most of the time one pass only moves them one space. Of course, one easy optimization to bubble sort is to remove this whole rabbit turtle thing. How can we actually make everyone rabbits? How can we bubble to the left and to the right at the same time? This is where cocktail sort comes in. Now the premise behind cocktail sort is exactly the same as bubble sort. However now, instead of moving only in one direction that is from left to right, we also move in the opposite direction. So for a forward pass, we want to move the larger items to the right. When we come back, we want to move the smaller items to the left. In fact, let us trace it now and see how it works. Now we are working on the same unsorted list here, and what's going to happen is we're going to move forward first. This should be nothing new to you because this is exactly what bubble sort does. So now we've hit the end of the list, instead of jumping all the way to the left and moving forward again, what we're going to do is we're going to move backwards instead. As you can see now, we are comparing an element with its neighbor on the left. If it is smaller than its neighbor on the left, a swap will take place. So basically what we're doing now is we're trying to push the smaller numbers to the left. Completing this pass, you will notice of course that 1 has been put in its correct position. Bearing in mind of course that since 1 is the smallest item in this list, if we were to use bubble sort, it's going to be the greatest turtle. It is going to move the slowest compared to pretty much any other element. However, thanks to the way cocktail sort works, 1 is pushed to the left right away. Let us now continue tracing the algorithm so we can see how much more efficient it is than bubble sort. Since this last pass has no swaps, we can conclude that the list is in fact sorted. Now, here's an interesting point to note. If you were to look at bubble sort or selection sort, when we say one pass of the algorithm, it is given that n comparisons are made. Because of course, in a pass, there are n items, and we go through each one of them and make some kind of comparison. That is not the case for cocktail sort. Because one pass of cocktail sort moves forward through the list and then back, we've actually made two n comparisons. Of course, because each element in the list has been looked at twice. This means of course that unfortunately, with regard to time, cocktail sort still performs at an n squared time complexity. Why? Because it looks at n items and times. Strictly speaking, cocktail sort should be a little bit faster than bubble sort. However, it's not enough to change the time complexity. We could simply say that the changes are minor, but there should be a slight improvement. In terms of the average case, best case, and worst case time complexity, cocktail sort fares pretty much the same as bubble sort. Remember that in bubble sort, if no swaps were made, we could conclude that the list is sorted and no more passes need to be made. The same applies with cocktail sort. In a complete pass, if cocktail sort doesn't make any swaps, it can terminate right away because the list is already sorted. However, for the worst and average case, the time complexity for cocktail sort is still n squared. And that basically wraps it up for this episode of Sorting Algorithms. As always, if you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, I will appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But once again, that's a wrap for this episode. Until next time, you are watching 0612TV.